John chapter 8, Jesus deals with people whose eyes are blinded to the truth about him. Chapter 8 of John's Gospel begins with 11 verses that are not in the earliest and best available manuscripts. So chapter 7 verse 52 gives us the immediate context of what Jesus is saying. Chapter 7 verse 52, the Pharisees comment on Jesus' ethnic origins, his Galilean origins. And he cannot therefore in their eyes be seen as the Messiah, the coming saviour of the world. Jesus doesn't match their preconceived ideas about what he should be. He doesn't scratch where they itch. So they reject him because they just can't see it. They can't see the truth about Jesus because of their preconceived ideas. And it's in direct response to that inability to see who Jesus is that Jesus responds really directly in chapter 8 verse 12. He doesn't back off. He comes straight to the issue. Then Jesus spoke out again. I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So when Jesus claims to be the light, he claims to be the one that opens eyes to him as the life giver. Light in that sense, because no life on earth exists without light, really, does it? Very, very little. Something's going on there somewhere. Light's been involved in the process somewhere. If the sun went out, we'd all be stuck. Jesus says, I'm the one who gives life, energy to the whole system. I'm the light of the world. And whoever follows me, follows me, will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Now these Pharisee guys are not going to take that lying down. Here comes their first objection. You are testifying about yourself. They say, your testimony isn't valid. You're testifying about yourself. According to human standards, it requires two witnesses in their society, their time, their culture. Two witnesses are required by the law to establish the truth of any matter. But... Judging Jesus, who from chapter 1 onwards has been presented to us as God, judging him by human standards is a mistake. And Jesus responds to that straight away too. Verse 14, second part of the verse. Even if I testify about myself, he says, my testimony is true. Because I know where I come from and where I'm going. But you people do not know. You see, they're blinded, they can't see, they haven't got the light. You people do not know where I came from or <coughs> where I'm going. You people do not know where I came from or where I'm going. And there's the root of the blindness that Jesus identifies. So where does Jesus come from? Where he came from, chapter 1, is the throne of the eternal God. And where he's going is son of man, Daniel 7, back to sit on the throne with the Ancient of Days. You see, if you're judging by human standards, yeah, fair enough, you need a couple of witnesses. But their judgment is inaccurate because human and based on externals, as verse 15 highlights. But Jesus' judgment is accurate, especially in verse 16, as there's two of them, the Father and I, says Jesus. So, Jesus' response, verses 17 and 18, I testify accurately because of who I am, says Jesus. But in addition to that, the Father also testifies to who I am. And this will have consequences for you. Because of the truth of Jesus' testimony and because of who he actually is, Verse 24, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. You've been told, you've been shown by reliable testimony. Jesus testifies to himself and he backs it up with Old Testament scripture and so on throughout his ministry. But the father also backs that up. The father attests his ministry. There was the voice from heaven at his baptism by John the Baptist. This is my beloved son. Hear him. 
And that occurs throughout Jesus' ministry from time to time. It hasn't occurred by the time of chapter 8, but, but it does occur repeatedly. The Father testifies. And then there are the miracles that Jesus does that match the Old Testament prophecy that God gave through his prophets. There's Jesus' own testimony. There's the integrity of his life, his teaching, his witness. And, and frankly, you know, we expose people to that now as, as the Church of God. What we do is we say, look at him, look. Doesn't he look like the person he says he is? Doesn't he look like? Doesn't he behave like? Of course he does. We expose people to that Jesus. There's Jesus' own testimony, the integrity of his life, his teaching, his witness. And then there's the Father's testimony to Jesus. By word, Jesus complies with the, the Old Testament prophecies about the one who would come to save people, give life. And spirit. So we reason with people from the word, the Old Testament prophecies. We show how Jesus fits what God said was going to be and, and did happen. And then we show people the spirit attesting Jesus in the New Testament. As he speaks to a crippled man who then gets up and walks away. As he heals the sick, as he raises the dead, the way Isaiah prophesied that the coming Saviour would. And we point people to what happens now. As people pray in Jesus name because this Jesus is not dead but alive and the word and the spirit testify still to him changed lives people given strength to live through challenging circumstances answered prayer the word and the spirit testify to Jesus who he is and because of this available evidence, those who shut their eyes, those who refuse the light, those who turn away from the brightness of the light, Jesus says, we can't avoid this. You've been shown and told. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Because what's offered to you as the remedy, the working remedy, you refuse. Jesus is not some gloom merchant here our faith is strengthened and we're encouraged by by this verse 47 the one who belongs to god listens and responds to god's words but then he turns to those who were shutting their eyes to his light and he says you don't listen and respond because you don't belong to god to listen is not enough response to the truth revealed that's what's needed you don't belong to god you don't listen and respond now those who listen and respond to what they don't understand and get in the time accustomed way something we see all too often they say verse 48 you must be mad. So often our response to what we don't understand and can't account for and can't fit to our way of seeing things in the world, we say, you must be mad. And that's what they do here with Jesus. They are Judeans, verse 52. They live in around Jerusalem. They have not seen much, in fairness, of the Father's testimony to Jesus yet. The day of Pentecost is yet to come, and Acts 2 will tell you that Many by then have actually seen and, and believed. Nor have they heard much of the Lord's own testimony to himself. Not yet. But in verse 58, verse 28, Jesus says, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak just what the Father taught me. When you lift up the Son of Man, and it's a reference to his coming crucifixion by these people in Jerusalem, or at least with their um, encouragement and, and consent. When you've done it, then you'll realise what you've done. And we know, we know from the accounts in Acts that thousands saw what they'd done when they'd done it turned from sin and trusted Christ as the Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost and in subsequent days. Jesus is he, verse 24b, and therefore, Jesus says, if anyone obeys my teaching, he will never 
see death. Never forever, the Greek is quite emphatic. But verse 24b remains for us to ponder and pay attention to. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins because you reject the remedy. You shut your eyes, you refuse the light. And in refusing his remedy, freely, freely offered, you shut yourself away. You shut yourself out. You die in your sins. So now let's try and come to the positive thing. Maybe you're saying, well, I haven't opened my eyes to Jesus. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen this before. Um, what am I going to do now? Because this is getting serious. Of course it is. This isn't a practice. Life is one life and it's the one we've got. And we've got to make the most and do the best with it. What, what are we going to do about this question? Firstly, I'd say this. Um, don't panic. Jesus has come to make it feasible for us to be in the right with God and live the strengthened life and the, the contented and blessed and satisfying life, let's put it like that, though not necessarily the easy one, that he's come to bring. Here's what you need to do. You need to look at yourself hard and long and you need to say, right, I can see that I haven't done exactly what I should have been doing along the way. That's not difficult. Facing up to it's difficult, but recognising the truth of that is not, not difficult. For anybody and then you need to say Lord I'm just sorry about that I'm sorry for that I'd rather not be in that position I want to turn away from that I want to repudiate that I want to leave that behind me I want to start walking in your direction in your ways I'm turning from that and I'm turning to you and I'm going to put my trust in you to take care of things for me turn from sin Trust this Christ who is the light of the world. Get to know his people. Get to know him in them and in his word, the Bible. You can get one online. There's an app. There are many apps. Life TV has a great Bible app, which will help a lot. Just go go find go find that. Find that app. Find, find it online. Go to Lumina Bible. Search Google that. And you'll find a Bible there. And really, really strongly, I recommend this. Start reading either in John's Gospel, if you're a Telegraph reader, or in, say, Mark's Gospel, if you're a Daily Mail reader. It, it, it's a matter of where you're coming from, what you're happy reading, the level that you want to take this thing at. John is one of these cultured erudite blokes, and Mark is to the point and straight. <laughs> And get in touch with us and tell us how you're thinking and you'll see the web address to do that there's a contact form on the web address at the end of this video hey thanks for listening thanks for staying with us till now god bless you may his light shine in your heart and bring you the light of life hey that'd be great